Over the centuries, church leadership has been defined in a variety of ways. So before the Reformation, uh, very often the priest was a kind of mystical figure. He stayed single. Uh, he was kind of ascetic. He was a mediator. He's the one who knew God. And the people didn't necessarily know God. They could go and confess, but there was no great sense of, you can know God. The priest will know God. Uh, he's a set-apart man, and that was how it was. Uh, the Reformation brought in the glorious truth of the priesthood of all believers, that each one could know him from the least to the greatest. We could, we could all have access to God. We have a great priest in Jesus. So that dawned a new day. But as time went by, certainly in much of church history, the, 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 the minister, uh, one can see him in uh, ancient novels. He's a kind of squire. He's part of the character of the nation, of the city, of the village. There's the, the church man, and uh, he might be a married man now, but uh, he's kind of a, a professional, like a doctor might be, um, somewhat separated. I think with the Enlightenment came more and more the sense, well, we must be, we must be scholars now. These, these men are scholars, we must be scholars. And so there came a season where Ministers, we must get a degree because, well, they've, they've got degrees. We must be able to answer their inquiry, uh, biblical criticism. We must be able to answer that. So pastors need to go to special colleges to be able to answer biblical criticism. That knowledge began to... And so we we're often responding to what was happening in the world. Uh, I think next came, like, therapy was the big thing. And it's almost like the pastor had to be able to go back into your past. What happened to you when you were a little child? You know, did you get kicked by your mother? Um, you know, what is, have you been inwardly hurt? And uh, we were being shaped by the concept of therapy. And that became hugely important for, I don't know, a few decades. Um, and I guess probably now business management is the huge thing. So now pastors are expected to have their five-year plan, that uh, have that everything's geared to management. Have you have you got your staff? Well, you, you must hire some staff. If they don't do very well, you must fire them. Um, I heard a, a man say, you know, if you don't don't make friends with your staff, it's harder to fire them. And it's being shaped by management skills in the workplace. And these things have had huge influence on how churches are being led. It changes from season to season. And so the therapy perspective, which was so prevalent 10, 15 years ago, has been much replaced now by the management method. Not that we can't learn things from sharp management, that may be very helpful insights for the church, but when it shapes your whole approach, I would say it's missing the biblical norm. But I can see down through the centuries, the way leaders are perceived have very often been shaped by what's happening in the world, or a reaction to or response to what's out there. And leadership, yeah, it tends to reflect the culture.